Today I have something extra special for you. My good friend Marty Dredd, who runs the Let's Build WP WordPress channel here on YouTube, has created a video for me to share on this channel. And it's all about five techniques you can apply this afternoon to speed up your WordPress site. And if you like this video, make sure you click on the link in the description down below, subscribe to Marty's channel, tell him you like this video, tell him you like his other videos because they're all awesome. So check out his stuff. And with that out of the way, I'm gonna pass this over to Marty. Thanks a lot Bjorn for this awesome opportunity to work with you on your channel. It really does mean a lot to me and I hope my video doesn't disappoint. For anyone who isn't already subscribed to WP Learning Lab, I highly recommend doing that now and be sure to click the bell icon to be notified about any new videos. Bjorn is always posting great content every week and I really think you'll benefit from his videos. In this video we're going to be covering 5 simple steps we can follow to speed up our WordPress website or blog for free. See, Google have stated in the past that our site speed can actually have a direct impact on our search engine rankings, which means improving our site speed could result in higher rankings and therefore more organic traffic to our site. Okay, so before we start making our WordPress site faster, we should check and see how fast it's running at the moment and this way we can get a better understanding of how well these different methods actually work. Lucky for us this is super easy to do. All we need to do is open up a new tab in our internet browser and go to tools.pingdom.com. Then here we can enter our site's URL, choose where in the world we'd like to test our site speed from and then click start test. I'd recommend choosing one of the US options but just make sure to choose the same option later on when we're testing our site at the end. This way we can get the most accurate reading for our site. After a few seconds the tool's going to show us an average loading time for our site along with some other useful information such as our average page size and our Google page speed score. So as we can see my demo site has an overall loading time of around 4.18 seconds. This really isn't good, but hopefully we can see a decent improvement after implementing these different steps we're about to cover. And now that we know how fast our site's running at the moment, we can actually get started. So here are five different steps we can follow to speed up our WordPress website or blog for free. Step number one, optimize our blog and archive pages. Just so everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about, by WordPress archive pages, I'm simply referring to our different post pages, like our main blog page and our category and tag pages. See, WordPress is set up by default to show a list of full blog posts on these pages, but we can also change our site to show what are known as post excerpts instead, which look more like this. Then another thing we can do is reduce the number of posts that appear on each page. The reasoning behind these two things is that if we reduce the amount of content that needs to load up when someone visits our different blog and archive pages, we can reduce the overall loading time of our site. Plus it only takes us a few seconds to do this. We simply hover over settings in our left dashboard menu and then click reading. To show excerpts instead of full posts, we just change this option from full text to summary. Then we can change the number of posts per page by changing the number in these two boxes from 10 to something like 5 or 6. Then we can click save changes at the bottom when we're done. And now when we visit our blog or archive pages, we should see that each post now shows as an excerpt instead of the full post. And we now have less posts per page. Not only will this help our site load a little faster, but I personally think it looks much better this way myself. Step number two, only use well-coded themes and plugins. Some WordPress themes and plugins are nothing short of amazing. They enable us to turn mediocre sites into a fully customized masterpiece. And they're what set WordPress apart from its competition. But there's also something we need to be aware of, Sometimes themes and plugins can slow down our site, which is obviously the opposite of what we're trying to do here. 
So to keep our site running as fast as possible, we need to make sure that we only use well-coded themes and plugins from trusted sources. So to ensure we're using a well-coded theme, we can run a scan using the free theme scan plugin. This plugin allows us to make sure our theme is up to spec with the latest theme review standards. So basically we can run all the same scans that WordPress.org do themselves before they accept a theme submission on their site. After installing the plugin, we just need to hover over Appearance in our left dashboard menu and then click Theme Check. Now we can choose which theme we're wanting to scan using this drop down menu and then click Check It. After a few seconds, it's going to show us some different information about this particular theme. And if we look at the results for the rocked theme I'm using in this demonstration, we can see that it's passed the test. Now, that's not to say that all themes that fail this test are bad themes. But if we notice a lot of error messages, it might be time to consider using a different theme. Now that we know we're using a good theme, let's move on to plugins. So to make sure we're only using quality plugins, we just need to install and activate the free plugin called P3 Performance Profiler. Once this plugin's been installed, we can hover over Tools in our left dashboard menu and click P3 Plugin Profiler. Then we just need to click the Start Scan button and choose Auto Scan. It normally only takes a few seconds to finish, but for sites with a lot of plugins installed, this can obviously be longer. Once it's finished, we can click View Results and we'll see a screen like this one here. We can just hover our mouse over each of these different colored sections in the chart and it's going to show us how much time each of these plugins are adding to our site's overall loading times. If we notice any plugins are adding a lot more loading time in comparison to the others, we can consider trying to find a replacement plugin if possible or removing the plugin altogether. Step number three, install a good caching plugin. For those of you who maybe don't know already, I'll quickly explain what caching actually means. So when we visit a website or blog, our internet browser and the site's web host need to exchange a few different files before we can view the content on that particular site. Now this normally only takes about a second but if we add in all the other different factors that might slow our site down, one second can be quite a big deal. So to decrease the amount of time it takes for our site to load up, we can use a caching plugin. A caching plugin will save our different pages and posts as static HTML files, which can be loaded up much faster when someone lands on them. I personally use the W3 Total Cache plugin over on letsbuildwp.com and can't find any reason to fault it. But rather than relying on my recommendation, if we take a look at the official plugin page on WordPress.org, we can see it currently has over 1 million active users and a 4.5 star rating at the time of recording this. After we install and activate the plugin, we just need to scroll down our list of installed plugins until we see the W3 Total Cache plugin, and then we can click Settings. Here we simply scroll down a little bit and check the box to enable page cache and then click save all changes on the left. And that's all we need to do to enable caching on our site. Step number four, compress images with WP Smoosh. A website or blog without images would be a pretty depressing place. Everybody pretty much gets this fact and make sure to include a few images here and there to break up their content. Unfortunately though, sometimes images can be terrible for our site speed. This is due to the file size of some images and it's especially true if we're using high resolution images on our site. An awesome way to decrease the file size of images we've already uploaded in the past is by installing the free WP Smoosh plugin. Once we've activated the plugin on our site, we just need to click Smoosh in our left dashboard menu and then on this page, we can click the bulk smoosh button. The plugin's then going to compress all of our different images to a much lower file size without affecting our images quality. I have no idea how this works, but I'm definitely not complaining. 
Using the free version of the plugin, we can compress up to 50 images at a time, and there's no wait time in between. I've never felt the need to upgrade this plugin, and I still use the free version myself. Once it's finished compressing our images, we can take a look at the results on the right hand side. So in my example, the plugin compressed a total of 8 images and 72 attachments, which managed to save me 13.2% of their original file size. In my opinion, that's pretty damn impressive, and especially for a free plugin and only spending a couple of minutes. Step number five, make our site's images lazy. Okay, so as I already mentioned in the previous step, images can be one of the main culprits for slow loading sites. This means we should always try to minimize the amount of loading time caused by our images as much as we possibly can. Another way of doing this is by making our images lazy. See, normally when we land on a website, all of the images on that page need to load up at the same time, along with the rest of the content, like text and videos. Needless to say, this can take quite a while, but if we make our images lazy, only the images that will be seen right away load up at first, and then the rest will load up as we scroll further down the page. Now, I know this sounds like it's going to be a little complicated or tedious to set this up for all of our images, but for this step, all we need to do is install and activate the free Lazy Load plugin. There are no options or setup involved. We just activate the plugin on our site and all of our images will be lazy from now on. It really is that simple. So that's us at the end of the final step and we can now head back over to tools.pingdom.com to see how much of an improvement we've managed to make. Just remember to choose the same place to test from as before and for the record, I chose to test mine from New York both times. So as we can see, my demo site that I've been using for this video now loads up in 1.62 seconds. And when we compare this to my original loading time of 4.18 seconds, we can see that just by following these five simple steps, I've managed to improve my loading time by 2.5 seconds or 61% depending how you want to measure it. This result is much better than I really anticipated to be honest, but even if this was only a one second improvement, I would still be happy. And that's us now at the end of this tutorial, and that was five simple steps we can follow to speed up WordPress for free. If you want to keep learning more, at the end of this video there will be links to two different playlists, one from Bjorn which will cover more free ways to speed up WordPress as well as go more in depth on some of the topics we covered in this video. Then the second playlist is one of mine over on Let's Build WordPress which contains some of my most popular WordPress tutorials and videos. Once again I'd just like to say thank you very much to Bjorn for having me here on his channel. My name's Marty Dredd from letsbuildwp.com and thank you very much for watching my video. That was awesome, Marty. Thank you for sharing this valuable content with us. If you're watching this video and you want to know how to subscribe to Marty's channel, there's a link in the description down below. I encourage you to subscribe. He's got great stuff over there and he's creating more and more great content. So check out his channel in the description down below. I've also linked to one of his playlists on the top left or top right over here. So make sure you check out that playlist as well. And until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.